This is the Oakland Athletics Science of Baseball webinar. This program is made possible through the support of Chevron and the collaboration of Oakland Unified School District. The Oakland A's uh, have uh, launched this program to support STEM education in the Bay Area and one of the components of the program involves the STEM showcase and the objectives of the showcase are going to be presented in this webinar as well as some examples for you to follow. My name is Ricardo Valerdi and I'm with the Science of Sport. Our social media uh, addresses are on the bottom of the slide if you'd like to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. The purpose of the STEM showcase is twofold. First, for your students to demonstrate what they've learned through the Science Baseball program. And secondly, for your students to participate in hands-on activities. In order to achieve the first objective, uh, we wanted to provide some example project options for you to follow. Uh, but uh, by all means, if there are other baseball and STEM related ideas that you'd like to pursue, uh, please feel free to do that. We figured it would be easier for some of the schools and the students and teachers uh, if they already had some ideas provided to them. So the four ideas that we'd like to propose align with some of the kit materials and standards that uh, are included in the A's Science of Baseball curriculum. The first has to do with launch angles. The second has to do with ballpark design. The third with base running and the fourth with road trips. I will be going through the planning packet for the STEM showcase and providing you a little bit more detail on each of these four projects. Uh, and I also wanted to share with you some examples of what the projects look like in a STEM showcase format. The photo you see here is from a recent event that we did in Atlanta at SunTrust Park uh, with the Atlanta Braves. And you'll see here that there are tables set up in a public area where students bring their projects that are displayed typically in a trifold poster format as in many science fairs uh, at schools and uh, the students then have the opportunity to present their projects to the general public and in some cases to people from the team. One project I wanted to share with you is uh, one that shows the trifold format but also has a lot of visuals. There are some photos on the right. There are some original drawings and diagrams in the center, but also a physical model of something that the students built. Uh, so any and all of these are possibilities uh, that uh, can be implemented as part of the STEM showcase. The idea is for students to put what they've learned into practice uh, by choosing a topic that they can relate to. Uh, another example is uh, also the similar trifold poster format which includes a more formal science fair project approach where uh, there's information provided in each of the three planes um, and the procedures and the list of materials and also uh, a connection to other standards that they're learning in their classrooms. So what we want the students to do is to put their best foot forward and apply the things that they've learned uh, in doing some of the science and baseball lessons uh, and put them into real life. So we have uh, four examples to share with you and propose and we hope that uh, one or more of these uh, would be adopted by your school. One of the resources that you'll be provided with is this Oakland A's Science of Baseball STEM Showcase Planning Packet. In this packet 
there are multiple examples for I've described before but also some detailed instructions and objectives that can be followed uh, and uh, and then implemented in the trifold poster format for presentation at the STEM showcase. The first project option has to do with examining the relationship between the launch angle of a baseball and the horizontal distance that it travels. One of the common terms used in Major League Baseball now is launch angle and that's the angle at which the ball comes off the bat. In the STEM showcase planning packet you have a set of instructions, objectives, and keywords as well as uh, some materials that uh, can be utilized to implement this particular project and those materials um, were provided in the um, in the science of baseball teacher kit the hypothesis for this particular project uh, is left to the student but could be uh, along the lines of examining uh, the higher lower and middle angles associated with uh, the trajectory of a baseball. Uh, the experimental procedure is fairly detailed and basically what it leads to is the um, implementation of uh, a launch using the water balloon launcher uh, but measuring the degrees at which uh, the water balloon launcher is launched uh, relative to the horizon. So you'll see in these three diagrams in these three photos uh, they demonstrate a low angle of 20 degrees, a middle angle of 45 degrees, and a high angle of 70 degrees. And as is with other scientific uh, projects the students are expected to take multiple measures, repeated measures, uh, to make sure that there are no uh, variabilities uh, in the data that's being collected and also take the average of those measurements um, and we recommend three but uh, the individual students or teachers might want to do more than three if time allows. The second project has to do with designing your own ballpark and this involves quite a bit of research online so there's a lot less physical activity and a lot more in-class activity. This may fit students who uh, maybe not want to go outside um, or don't have uh, the interest of doing uh, the launch. Instead they could focus on uh, researching various ballparks around the country. And uh, what we'd like the students to do is to look at all the ballparks that are out there for Major League Baseball and there are 30 of them um, and also pick a subset of them to identify some unique architectural features. Uh, all that to be done as background so that they can design their own ballpark with their own features that they might be interested in. So the specific features are identified here in item 4 uh, which involve uh, answering some questions like uh, what kind of scoreboard or roof or the wall distances uh, between home plate and the center field wall or home plate and the left field or right field foul poles uh, but also how many bathrooms um, parking capacity uh, any food items uh, and also um, access for uh, handicapped so the whole concept of universal design of designing for all types of fans uh, could be implemented here. Um, so in order to answer some of these questions it would be helpful for students to uh, recognize and research what is already out there so there is a long list of stadiums uh, that are provided here uh, but also um, there's an activity that can be done to match the team names which are listed in the first two columns uh, in this page with the stadiums which are listed on the right side of the page. Um, and these are the hint sheets which can then be utilized to 
fill out uh, the, some of the worksheets here on this page and the next page. Uh, and if the teacher wants to have the answers to all these up front, those are also provided to you uh, on page 18 of the planning package. So what this allows uh, the students to, uh, uh, to do is research what some of the fields that are out there, uh, utilize the names that are provided here as starting points that they can go out and identify some of the answers to the questions that they're going to have to figure out for their own ballpark design. The third project idea we would like to propose has to do with base running. And unlike uh, the previous project on ballpark design, base running involves a lot of physical activity. And it helps students um, not only understand the distances between bases, but also the time that it takes to run uh, around all the bases. So if if home plate was here on the bottom in both of these diagrams, there are two different ways of running the bases. They can either running in a linear path, which is running directly from home plate to first, and then to second, third, and then back to home, or to run it from home plate uh, in a circular path as is shown on the diagram on the right. And what's fun about this is that it's a relatively short uh, experiment, uh, but it requires students to collect information in terms of the duration, how much time it takes uh, each student to run the bases in either of the two formats. And the data collection for this is fairly simple. They only have to collect data as shown in this table uh, between the straight path and the banana path. Uh, as is shown in the diagrams in the previous page. The straight path um, is a shorter distance, but it turns out it takes more time. The banana path is a longer distance, but it takes less time. And the reason for the difference is because of angular momentum. Angular momentum allows the runners to maintain a constant speed when running the bases in the banana path. But when runners are running in a straight line path, they have to slow down when they approach each base in order to make a 90 degree left turn. So this is another project that can be done um, with multiple students and they could uh, collect the data uh, for their own performance and make a lot of charts, uh, make a lot of bar graphs, uh, but also maybe take some photos. Um, but in the end, they're applying the scientific method to a very important question in baseball, which is which way is faster to run the bases? The fourth project option is related to designing a baseball road trip. Unlike the previous example with base running, where there's a lot of physical activity, baseball road trips requires no physical activity, but it requires a lot of uh, research and uh, use of the internet to calculate distances between cities. In other words, what we want the students to think about are baseball stadiums that they would be interested in visiting outside of Oakland. Then this would require them to calculate the distance between uh, these stadiums and we recommend the road distance not the flight distance and then do all the associated research uh, for ticket prices, parking, food costs, etc. and then put together a budget for the trip. And in order to start doing this uh, we've provided a map of the 30 Major League Baseball stadiums and we again recommend for them to choose three that are outside of Oakland. So maybe they want to go to Seattle or Denver or Boston. Um, and we provide some examples of uh, locations and distances. Um, and uh, we, for instance, picked Pittsburgh as a city that they might want to visit, uh, the pricing for the tickets and the parking and the hot dogs, etc. cetera. Um, so this example is just one of multiple uh, data points that they might uh, come up with in their research. And we provided also uh, some of the typical pricing for tickets, for parking, 
Um, so a lot of that data is available here in this table or uh, online at the website called teammarketing.com which is listed here on the bottom and the end result will be their own plan for the road trip and the identification of three cities that uh, they might want to visit uh, leaving from Oakland and then arriving at city one then going to city two to city three and then back to Oakland so we hope that uh, these four projects uh, are uh, good starting points for you and your students uh, to implement some of the concepts from the A's Science of Baseball curriculum uh, and then showcase uh, them at the upcoming uh, STEM showcase event uh, which will be a lot of fun because multiple students will bring their projects and will show what they've learned and what they've done uh, and it will also be an opportunity for the community to see uh, these ideas and these concepts in action. Uh, please reach out to us uh, with any additional questions you might have about the implementation of these projects, uh, the materials needed, um, and we'd be happy to answer any and all questions to make sure that uh, the event is a success. Thank you.